at a time when so many people are fed up with the gridlock in Washington over the nation's deficit, taxes, health care, and immigration, one man has been generating a lot of buzz for his prescription on ways to fix the nation's most challenging problems. Ever since he made national headlines last month at the National Prayer Breakfast, Dr. Benjamin Carson has quickly become an outspoken critic of the White House and a government that does not encourage personal responsibility. Dr. Corson is joining us now, and he's also a best-selling author whose latest book called America the Beautiful takes a look at the values of what has contributed to America's greatness. Dr. Carson, so great to have you here today. It's an honor to have you here on the show. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, you've certainly been provocative and setting the blogosphere on fire. Some of your critics claim that you enjoy courting controversy, but others might say you offer a common sense approach for some of America's toughest problems. Why do you think your message is resonating with so many people? Because I think there are a lot of people who have been uh, bludgeoned into silence who really feel very strongly about the values of this country and uh, they don't think that there's anything that they can do now. And finally, when somebody speaks up about it, they resonate with that. You know, I've gotten so many letters from people who said they'd given up and now they were invigorated again. Every place I go, people come up to me and tell me that. And, uh, you know, I, it, it makes me understand that there's a, a large number of frustrated people out there. They just don't feel like they're being represented. Well, you take aim at political correctness in this country, and you've said somebody has to stand up, quote, to the bullies. Who are the bullies that you're referring to? Uh, the bullies are the, the people, uh, especially the media, uh, who like to, to just beat on anybody who doesn't toe the line, uh, who doesn't say what they're supposed to say and act the way they're supposed to act. And they suppress freedom of speech and freedom of expression and people have succumbed to that and what I'm telling people to do is don't succumb to it you know talk about what you think is right you need to talk to even the people who who represent you because a lot of those people uh, don't really know what you feel if you don't really speak up and tell them and they instead begin to listen to the special interest groups and the people who are paying them lots of money and uh, really that's not the way that the system was set up you also say that as a nation, we're moving further and further away from God. What impact do you think this is having on our country? Well, you know, God is the source of our value system. Uh, this is, despite what some people say, uh, a Judeo-Christian nation. And our, our, our founding documents, all of the things were based on those kinds of things. And as we move away from them, we have to substitute something else. And uh, the, the values that traditionally have been substituted for the ones that are godly values do not lead to the uplifting of society. Dr. Carson, uh, I know we want to continue this conversation on the other side of the break, so please stand by, and we're going to hear more from Dr. Carson in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody, and we're back with our very special guest, Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, you know, there are so many people who have no problem letting government solve their problems and take care of them. You're very concerned about that and our nation's health care system. I want our audience for a moment to hear a clip from the National Prayer Breakfast where you talk about the problems you see with our current system. We spend a lot of money on health care, twice as much per capita as anybody else in the world, and yet not very efficient. Now, you ruffled some feathers at that prayer breakfast, but you've said that Obamacare is one of the worst federal laws in decades and that it's already destroying our economy. How so? Well, you know, there are so many uh, aspects of the, uh, the new health care law that are anti-work. And the fact of the matter is you have lots of employers now who want to cut people's hours back to less than 30 hours because at that point they don't have to provide health care. And it's so expensive to do. And the interesting thing is it's not necessary. You know, 80% of the contacts between the patient and health care provider could easily be handled by a health savings account without the necessity of insinuating a middleman, which sucks out huge amounts of profits and complicates the relationship. And we should just leave that last 20% where we need bridge insurance and catastrophic insurance. We could save a ton of money and we could create a much better environment. And people would begin to take some responsibility for their own health care.
which would mean they would start looking for the things that make sense, the things that are economically feasible. It would also force the medical profession into the free market economy and they would begin to, to have reasonable pricing. All of these things need to be done. Let me say uh, that one of the things people love about you is that you don't just complain. You're offering solutions for the nation. Again, let's hear a clip from that prayer breakfast on a solution to health care. Here's my solution. When a person is born, give them a birth certificate, an electronic medical record, and a health savings account, to which money can be contributed pre-tax from the time you're born to the time you die. When you die, you can pass it on to your family members so that when you're 85 years old and you got six diseases, you're not trying to spend up everything. You're happy to pass it on and there's nobody talking about death panels. Why do you think our leaders today are not coming up with reasonable solutions that show common sense to approaching this problem? Because everybody has their ego tied up in their solution. And uh, therefore, they can't really recognize a good solution when they hear it because they've already put theirs out and it's got to be the one. You know, we need to get over uh, the big egos. You know, the Bible says, by humility and the fear of the Lord, that's where success comes from. We've got to stop being so full of ourselves. And political correctness, of course, is something, again, that you feel really gets in the way of making progress in this country. Absolutely. It's, it's antithetical to the founding of our country. You know, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And I think the founders of our nation would roll over in their grave if they could see what we had done through the back door, suppressing people. And all the, the, the notices that I get from people, people are sending me money, they want me to run for office. It's just unbelievable. But just, I, I just appeal to the people who are already there in Washington, just wake up a little bit, stop being so full of yourself, listen to the people, and let's try to do some things, let's work together, and let's solve our problems. Well, let's hope we're going to move forward in the right direction. It's such a pleasure having you here today, Dr. Carson. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.